Hello Spain, I am so sorry that I can't be there. I really, really wanted to go. It's definitely on my bucket list. But they asked me to actually do a little bit of an introductory video here. And as you can see, I'm here at our global headquarters here in Los Angeles at Content Advisory. And I wanted to talk a little bit about and hopefully tee up this conference with something fun. So let's talk about killing marketing, how we can transform marketing from a cost center to a profit center. Because that's really what we're here to talk about. How can we start to even drive revenue with our marketing efforts? And that's something that we've been talking about for quite a while. So now, as you know, we're in an industry, marketing, that has been focused on attention forever. Attention has really built this industry. Whether it's advertising through print, radio, television, banner ads, spam, cold calling, our whole point has been to try to drive the attention of our consumer and convince them that our product or service is worth buying. It built this industry, but it's changing. Technology has come in and disrupted this. The idea of technology and democratizing the way that news is consumed, information is found, and products and services are bought has completely and fundamentally changed the way that we do our jobs. Today, trust and building trust in audiences is our opportunity. There is no better way to build trust than to create a subscribed audiences. Audiences today are our opportunity. We can be the trusted source of interesting things out there in the world. More than media companies, more than institutions, more than governments, we can be that trusted source of an interesting thing in the way our consumers receive value through media. They are assets to our business. If we can create a subscribed audience, we can create one of the most valuable assets the business might have. Now, in order to do that, of course, we have to foster the talent and trust that we have in our ability to create content that is valuable for those audiences. It can be a differentiator, but only if we treat it with the care and feeding that great content that a media company might create is created within. And that's really the source of our book. When Joe Polizzi and I wrote this book, Killing Marketing, this is the idea we had in mind. We started with a question. We said, what if everything we know about marketing is what's holding us back? What if everything we understand about marketing is actually what's holding us back from taking the next step? It seemed audacious at the time, but really it's not. How can we take marketing from something that is a cost center that we only manage as an expense in our business and transform it into a profit center, something that actually makes money for our business. That's where we are. Now here's the difference. Classic marketing and advertising, it's not going away. We love it. I am a student of marketing and advertising, have been for the last 30 years. And I absolutely love it, but it is different. And let me show you why. In classic marketing and advertising, we start with what? We start with broadcast audiences regarding how we might approach and reach them. It might be through print, radio, television, maybe even fax machine if you're so lucky. And we reach those broadcast audiences and we turn them into what? We turn them into visitors. Visitors to our website, visitors to our restaurant, visitors to our store, visitors to our e-commerce page. And those visitors, we hope, will begin to shop. And if they shop, we might convince them through the clever ways that we describe our products, the clever ways that we persuade those customers, the cleverness of our salespeople, that they actually become leads. They become qualified opportunities. They become opportunities that put things in their shopping cart in our e-commerce site. Those are prospective customers that ultimately, a fewer number still, will buy from us. They become customers of ours. And then a fewer number still will become loyal customers, evangelists, sharing our content and our brand all over the internet and where we want to reach more customers. And so the cycle continues. But that's the key, right? This is classic marketing and advertising, a funnel-based shape inherently. And we can change that because it's different with content marketing. The difference is in how we measure it. So in classic marketing and advertising, because we're dealing with how many fewer people come through and become funnel, we actually have to transform and look at it not just as a cost. In other words, when we look at classic marketing and advertising, we only measure it as a cost. We measure cost per thousand, cost per lead, cost per acquisition, cost per customer. Why? Because it's the only way we can measure it. So we measure ourselves based on efficiency of an expense. 
That's why marketing is seen as a cost center. Content marketing is different. It transforms the equation of how we measure. So we start, yes, with broadcast audiences, or what we might call anticipated audiences. And we reach those anticipated audiences through many of the same means that we might today. Television, radio, print, maybe that fax machine. But here, once we get them to our site, the first thing we do is not to convince them or persuade them or tell them how great our products are. The first thing we do is we deliver value. We inspire them. We entertain them. We teach them something. And when we do that, we turn them into engaged audiences. Someone who has received value from the content that they have consumed on our platform. Now, a certain number of them will actually become subscribers. And it's a growing number. That subscriber number, the more people we engage, the more subscribers, the bigger the audience becomes. And those become what we call addressable audiences. Audiences that we can address at our choosing. What I mean by that is that a Facebook follower, a Twitter follower, a podcast listener, a website visitor, those are not addressable audiences. We are still dependent upon another platform, a company, an algorithm to deliver those audiences to us when we want to reach them. An addressable audience is someone who wants to hear from us, who has subscribed to what it is we have to say on a consistent basis. So we can then start to model them against goals. We'll talk about those goals in just a moment. But we can model them against four different types of goals that we can then monetize as an audience asset. And then we can use technology to further measure us against those goals, turning audiences into one of the most important assets we will actually measure in our business. And that's the key. That's the key difference. Growing audiences over time, bigger audiences will support goals in a better way, and bigger audiences will also support more goals. That's an asset that grows over time. It's different. It's changing marketing into building a long-term valuable asset. That's the real key. And what we are seeing is that this is exactly the same business model as a media company. Media companies are in business to do what? Create content that engages audiences and builds those audiences so that they can monetize them over time. And you see media companies do this all over the world. They build media properties, content that builds an audience, and then what do they do? They productize that. They start selling t-shirts and keychains and records and music albums and all sorts of things productized around that that audience wants to engage in because they've gotten value out of the content that they've created. As my friend Joe Polizzi says, the media business model and the product business model today are exactly the same. So we have to get good at creating the content experiences that builds those audiences. And then we can measure them. And I promise you that I'd talk about the four C's of value. So here it is. The first one is campaign value. How can we drive better marketing campaigns by actually getting an audience that is engaged with our content to do things that we want them to do? Faster leads, better leads, more leads. Those are the kinds of things of value that we are used to when we think about content marketing. But as we start thinking about how to transform it, if we're truly delivering value, we can create cash. People will actually pay for our content if it's good enough to inspire, teach, or entertain them in a particular way. We can also create what we call competency value, which is where we turn content into the best R&D tool that we might have, where audiences will tell us what they want to buy from us. They will help us sell more. They will help us be a smarter, better company. And then finally, customer value. We can teach customers how to be better customers. We can teach them how to be more engaged, teach them how to be more loyal to our products and services. So let me give you just a couple of examples of this because I think it's really important. So there's a wonderful company and they're called Aero Electronics. And Aero Electronics you may have heard of. They are one of the top 20 companies in the United States by size. And what do they sell? Well, they sell electrical components. To who? Electrical engineers. So. Their whole site is about e-commerce and selling more electrical components to businesses and electrical engineers. They have spent the last 18 months buying every website, journal, magazine, and email newsletter in their space. They are now the biggest media company for electrical engineers. They own 53 magazines, websites, and educational journals. Why would they do this? Because they understand 
that electrical engineers get 100% of their post-university education from what? From journals, websites, email newsletters, and magazines. And so they saw all of these magazines going out of business because they're suffering from all of the media disruption that we all know so much about. And so they said to themselves, hey, we can leave that business alone, subsidize it so that it doesn't have to make a profit, it's just a small marketing cost from us, and we can learn from all of the things. So they sell advertising, they sell sponsorships to their competitors even, and so they're learning from the data acquisition, not only where their competitors are spending ad dollars, but where their market and what their market values. They are maintaining the education of their entire market. They have estimated that at any time they want, they reach 76% of their total addressable market. That's an amazing thing when you think about it. Imagine if you could tomorrow reach 76% of the total universe of your market. That's an incredibly powerful thing. And what if I said you could reach that and make money doing it? How about another example? Dennis Publishing. Dennis Publishing out of the UK, and this is a flip side. This is the flip side of this idea because, of course, Dennis Publishing is a media company. Media company that also creates magazines and books and all kinds of different content for audiences. What they've done is they're starting to sell cars now. That's right, Dennis Publishing makes an auto magazine, multiple auto magazines, in fact, from automobile enthusiasts, and they've now started selling automobiles. That's an interesting thing. So if you're a car person, you're a car company, your new competition isn't the, uh, the dealer down the street or the new manufacturer. It's a media company called Dennis Publishing that's selling cars. As you start to think about where your marketing might exp exponentially change things, you might look at Dennis Publishing as a model here. And then maybe finally, my favorite one of the last few years, which is Salesforce. Salesforce, of course, a software company that makes CRM software, and they have the biggest technology software event on the planet. That's right, think about that for a moment. The biggest technology software event on earth is not managed by a media company, not managed by an event company, it's managed by a technology company. 175,000 people invade San Francisco every single year to celebrate all things Salesforce at Dreamforce. They've estimated alone, if they were to just pull Dreamforce out of Salesforce as an event, it might be worth a billion dollars itself. People pay for the privilege of going to a one week long event celebrating all things around the Salesforce brand. That's an incredible platform. It's making money. It is a profit center for that company. Your customer event, your sales event could also be just that profitable. I hope you'll take the opportunity to start to create trust with audiences, to look at your content a little differently as a platform that can build and engage audiences and drive multiple lines of value through any of the four C's that you might see and actually create so much value that you could even charge for it and transform your marketing organization into a profit center. Thank you so much for letting me invade your little space, your conference. I wish I was in Spain with you and I wish you the best of conferences and we'll see you next time. Remember, it's your story to tell. You tell it well.